the number of states, right? Is it 11 exactly yet? Damon, y'all ready? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Zoning Committee. It is August 22nd. I am Marcy Collier Overstreet, your chair for zoning. And I am joined by my colleagues. To my right, we have Mary Norwood, and to next sitting next to her, and right next to me is Councilmember Andrea Boone. And to my far left, we have Councilmember Baron Amos. Next to him is Councilmember Shook. Next to him is Councilmember Amir Faroki, and we're being joined by Councilmember Westmoreland also. So. We have a full house. The first full house. I don't think this has happened <laughs> before on zoning. Let me make it. <laughs> Happy <laughs> August. So, with that being said, let's get started. Um, I move to adopt Second. the agenda. Second by Howard Shook. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. It's seven years and zero nays. Thank you. And with that, we'll move on down, and I move to approve the minutes. Second by Shook. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Seven years and zero nays. And this is the portion where we get to public comment. Do we have any public comment? Prophet signed up for public comment, and you have three minutes. Don't forget that it cannot be um, anything that's on our legislative agenda for today. It can, can. Cannot. Those go to the zoning review board. Is it home? Oh, okay. Again, um, y'all know my name, Prophet Harrison, the same prophet that told you I was going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, nobody wanted to believe until it happened, right? Okay. Now, I want to talk about Martyr Bus Station. That, for one, I, I called them twice. They never showed up. And I was in danger. Some, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with them. And some part of Atlanta Police, too. And I'll be back at 1 o'clock. Okay, I called Mata. This guy was threatening me. Now, I can handle myself. But I called. I was on the phone with the police. Mata police. I'm talking to her. She told me to hold on for a minute. This guy is threatening me. He's getting ready to beat me up. Wait, so he thought he was going to beat me up. I'm on the phone with the police. They never showed up. See, that's the problem that people have. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. This is what I observed. And also, I observed, I observed me, this person you're talking to, the prophet right here. I'm in the middle of two guys arguing, both of them got guns, on model station. Police never showed up. That's the problem that we have with police. Now, kids everywhere. There were kids on this buggy. Model police never showed up. Now, I'm saying yesterday, yesterday, I'm walking through the model stage, marijuana everywhere, police over there, they ain't said nothing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, you arresting folks for walking through there for $2.50. They arrested me for $2.50 for coming through the model stage last two weeks ago. Three black guys. But you... I called you and you didn't show up. That's why folks sue Marta, that's why people don't like police officers. See, but y'all coming in looking like, why are you going out? Why this woman going out? Why this man? Because they being mistreated. Much less what's happening on these jobs, with racism on these jobs, and what's going on in the jail station, homeless people living underneath bridges. See, but y'all act like 
nobody should be down here protesting and saying stuff. This is a city. We all govern each other. This is not about just, I'm just as upset at the church about homelessness. I'm the same way at my church. I talk to you the same way I talk to my pastor. I'm talking to lawyers. Thank you for commenting today. Um, going forward, our public issues should really pertain to zoning, just not the ones that's actually on the agenda. Thank you so much, though, what you said. Um, we needed all of that information. So we're moving on now. We have something that we don't have that often, and that's a presentation. So we would uh, like to invite the City of Atlanta Zoning Ordinance Rewrite update to start the, um, the presentation. Introduce yourself. So, good morning, Honorable Zoning Committee. My name is Caleb Rossico. I am Project Manager for the Consultant Team for the Zoning Ordinance Rewrite. And joining me today is Bob Zeckler, who is providing legal guidance for our team. Let me make sure that uh, this works before I proceed. What I wanted to do this morning was to brief the committee on some of the work to date, but very importantly, tell you about what we're going to be beginning next week, which is really the second phase of this process focused on engaging public involvement. Now, as you know, um, we finished up the process last year with a series of idea labs, which included alternative options for very high level approaches to the zoning ordinance. Since that time, we've been doing a lot of work to get us to where we are today, and I wanted to share some of that with you. Um, the meeting next week is one of four workshops that are going to be incredibly important for the community to attend because these are where we begin to develop the actual content direction that's going to go in the zoning ordinance. As you'll see in a moment, we've done a lot of work, we've identified many issues, and we really need to hear from the community to understand what the diverse needs of various neighborhoods are. And so we've put together a series of four workshops that move from very general to very specific. And I want to emphasize the fact that we're going to be taking baby steps here in this process because we want to make sure that we hear from everyone and then very importantly I need to make sure that the recommendations that I make to the Office of Zoning and Development which in invariably will go to the City Council are truly grounded in the needs of Atlanta's neighborhoods. So that's a, a personal commitment that both myself and Mr. Zeckler and others on the team bring. So with that said, the four upcoming meetings are focused first on citywide issues, uh, zoning regulations that are more about the structure of the code. How do we handle zoning districts? How do we handle parking? How do we handle um, you know, design issues? From that, we're then going to go finer and finer grain with a series of meetings and exercises focused on the Atlanta city design growth areas, which are the more high intensity areas of the city. And then finally, early next year, we're going to get to what I think is going to be um, in many ways the most important conversation of this effort, which is how do we address growth and development in the, the conservation areas, really the beloved trade neighborhoods of the city. And so again, the idea is to go from very general to very specific with each step in the process providing feedback into the next. Now, I wanted to remind everyone that we are also supported by a very great outreach team, uh, Content Consulting, who has been, hopefully, uh, you've seen some of the signs they've been putting around the city advertising for the upcoming meetings. They're putting together email blasts, social media, et cetera. And we've put together a great website with all of this information, atlzoning.com. Uh, that is where we're going to share all of the materials from the process, all of the workshop items, and very importantly, virtual exercises for those who cannot attend one of the meeting dates. Additionally, for those who do not have internet access, we set up a hotline, 404-546-0116, so that they can leave their comments. And then, of course, conventional approaches like email or, or YouTube are available. So with that said, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit now about what we've been working on to get to the very important part of the process that we're in. As a reminder, uh, zoning is the tool that determines what can be built in various parts of the city, but very, very, very important. 
and this is something I can't stress enough. Zoning is a tool of the comprehensive plan and it is a tool of various city policies. And so we are going to focus more on making sure that we have the right kind of tools that Atlanta's neighborhoods and business districts need um, at this point in the process rather than talking about necessarily where in the city they might apply. And that's important because the zoning code is over 40 years old. The last full update was in 1982 and Atlanta has changed. I'm sure you've all seen this before where you know sort of the time Atlanta's zoning ordinance was written was a high point in population. The city then decreased in population and then we're now back at an all-time high today. But late 1970s Atlanta was very different. Um, just incredibly different city. Um, different ideas about what made great neighborhoods, different ideas about what made great business districts. And it's important that, that while that has worked very well for the city, it's time for a refresh, it's time for thinking about a new code. And so our process, as I mentioned, is going to focus on the zoning ordinance, the written part of the zoning code, um, which is general standards, um, zoning districts, etc. And we anticipate quite a few changes are going to come out of that. Um, our team includes a national code writer, a code studio out of Austin, Texas, and they've told us that typically when they rewrite a zoning ordinance, about 70% remains the same. It's just cleaned up and reorganized. But, you know, 30% is typically new updated content. So I, I think that that 30% is, is critical. And then, of course, there are a lot of other city ordinances that are not part of the zoning ordinance but work hand in hand. So we're going to make sure that whatever we do aligns with tree preservation, stormwater, stream protection, um, and, and other city initiatives. Now, I did want to mention that, as all of you know, but the viewers at home may not, um, the zoning ordinance is only one part of, of the code. There is also the zoning map, which designates where different zoning districts go in various parts of the city. Um, we are going to be preparing a new zoning map as part of this process because we might change district names or we might um, come up with new terminology. And so we really have to do that from a legal perspective. But our team does not anticipate significant changes to that map at this point. And again, the reason for that is that I'm a planner. And as a planner and as someone who's very familiar with the procedures in the city, I respect the sanctity of the CDP as the process to determine what zoning should go where in the city. So we're going to effectively translate the current zoning map into the new terminology, into the new structure, build in tools that could then be applied to other parts of the city uh, based on whatever comes out of the updated CDP process, but we don't foresee significant map changes at this time. And that is, again, another recommendation from our national code writers. Rewriting a city's zoning code is very difficult and very, um, it, it really affects everyone. And those cities that have been successful have separated writing the text from map, map changes. When you tie them together, they don't tend to pass. And my, my priority is obviously to give the city something that we know can get through the diversity of the city, which is why we, we strongly focus on, on the text at this point. So, um, how did we get here? Well, as you know, this is part of a multi-year process that began many years ago with uh, Atlanta City Design, a series of supplemental documents. And then in 2017 and 2018, uh, Mr. Zeckler and I and others had the privilege of working with the city on a zoning ordinance diagnostic that sort of laid the foundation for where we are today. It included hundreds of interviews, literally thousands of comments from the public, and identified the important issues that the city needed to look at as part of this full update. It also provided a series of shorter term changes that were made as part of the quick fix ones and twos. But now we're really at, at the important part of the process. Um, and as you may have heard, this is going to take a while. Uh, we don't expect to have a full zoning ordinance for your consideration until um, nearly the end of 2024. Uh, and I know that's a little ways away, but any of you who have dealt with the code, which I know you all have, will respect the importance of getting it right before we hand in anything to the City Council for, for consideration. And again, the idea is to move from very general to very specific over time.
And so now we're about a third to a half of a way through the process. We have uh, done a significant amount of work. As I mentioned, we got some great feedback from the idea labs at the end of last year about the kind of things that people wanted to see, some receptivity to some of the concepts presented, and very importantly, the, the option of doing it online and reading everyone's chat was, was brilliant because it gives us the opportunity to see what folks are thinking even though they're not you know, formally submitting a comment to the city. So reading through the chats are, are really in, insightful in terms of what, what the community is talking about. Um, and so from that, since that time, we have updated a new diagnostic, if you will, that uh, will, will determine the direction for the actual rewrite. We've done some technical analyses, and then we started to develop alternatives, which are the focus of the, the workshops next week. So in terms of the technical analyses work, um, we've done some really fascinating um, synopsis, if you will, of floor area ratio and special administrative permits in the city. Um, for, the, for members of the public who are watching, floor area ratio is basically density, and special administrative permits are a kind of permit that the city has in its various districts. And what we found is that a lot of the city, outside of you know the downtown, midtowns, and buckheads, are not actually using their floor area ratio. A lot of the developments that are coming in are significantly under building. And so it, it was very useful information for us to think about because FAR is one of the, the critical pieces of the code. And then, of course, we've looked at the SAPs, we've looked at the uses, and quite frankly, the, the, the whole structure is incredibly confusing. And I, I have great uh, empathy for the Office of Zoning and Development for having to administer it every day because we can do better, we can make it clearer, we can make it easier to understand. And that analysis, as well as the Idea Lab, and as well as the work from 2017, influenced the new updated memo and diagnostic, which is a 80-page document that goes through in great detail an analysis of how well the current code does or does not support the Atlanta city design and the core values, and, and it doesn't fully support, but it does a fairly good job, has identified a lot of areas where the physical framework of the kind of development that the code allows, meaning the height, the scale, the density, doesn't fully align with the Atlanta City design in a variety of categories. And then, of course, we even looked at um, how the zoning today relates to those Atlanta City design areas, and that we found that um, you know, many of the communities, many of the neighborhoods with the newer SPIs and the newer of quality of life districts align a little bit better. Um, and, and those are often areas that have been proactively rezoned from the city. But if you're a neighborhood, if you're a community that hasn't had that benefit, the codes today don't work as well as they should. Um, and those are primarily those, those conservation areas that I've talked about. Additionally, um, we found that the city design and other policies just don't support many of the other visual, visual aspirations of the Atlanta city design. Open space, connectivity, uh, transitions, and that, that sort of thing. Um, and parking and use. So all of these ideas, which I'm not going to go through, are the foundation for this workshop next week. And then finally, one of our key findings, which again, the zoning committee will all know is that the current zoning ordinance is very unclear at times. Um, it, it is sometimes contradictory. Um, it, it sort of it was you can see that it was developed by different authors over different years. They had different writing styles, so they may think they're saying the same thing, but they use different words. And so the question logically becomes, well, are, are they actually saying the same thing? And it's it's just very hard for for the Office of Zoning to administer. It also has a lot of outdated terms um, that that. Quite frankly, I had to look up Bob New because he's the zoning attorney, but there were use terms and other definitions that I, I was not aware of that we need to modernize. Uh, additionally, there are over 200 separate zoning districts today when you factor in sub areas and, and base zoning. And so that's a lot of work for your staff. And then finally, there's just a whole bunch of conflicts um, internally within the zoning, again, about terminology and the way something's worded. And then opportunities to improve alignment with, with other districts, other codes. 
So from that, we then looked at a series of ways that we could structure this new zoning code that would begin to meet the policies of the comprehensive development plan, the framework of the city design, the feedback from the idea labs, and then the feedback from the previous diagnostic, and had a series of internal brainstorming sessions where we, we looked at various code structures. I mean, do we keep the status quo? Do we uh, consolidate the code, meaning maybe we keep the same districts, but we combine some? Do we go to a really lean ordinance, which is sort of a new trend in zoning, but it just, it doesn't, it doesn't meet Atlanta's needs. It really is, is too one size fits all. And then at our last idea lab, we reviewed this idea of what were called zone strings, um, which effectively was a concept that takes a zoning district and divides it into various parts that can be interchanged. So there would be a part about permitted uses, which if you've looked at the zoning code, you know there's always a section called permitted uses. There would be a part about the form of development. There may be a part about the, the, the relationship to the street. And we realized that we can actually separate those parts into various modules that be, can be combined in different ways in different neighborhoods. So for example, if you find in five years that there is a neighborhood that wants everything to have the same form as R5, but they may want to allow up to four units or five or six units in a building, they can keep the form standards, they can keep the design standards, but they could tweak the use standard. So it's almost like a way of making SPIs and making custom zoning without having to add another chapter to the zoning code. And so it's, it's a really important tool that I hope you'll join us next week to learn more about because I feel very, very strongly that this is what Atlanta has needed for a long time to reflect the various needs of the city. Um, there's also a documentation of our outreach strategy in there, which I've, I've reviewed with you already. I won't go through that. And then very importantly, um, we know that when we get down the road and we start to have specific regulations to consider, that it's really powerful to not speak in the abstract, to not say a tw you know, there's a 20-foot transitional yard between C3 and R4 but rather to show how any zoning changes might affect real sites in the city. So we're going to be doing a call for nominations starting next week to ask the public to submit properties in the city that they've always felt were important to their community that we can actually apply different zoning concepts to as we begin to think about the code. So there's going to be a call for sites across the city and over the next year and a half or two years as we begin to codify, we can say, okay, look, we might tweak that setback from 15 feet to 13 feet. This is what it would look like on that property. Or we might change the buffer. This is what it would look like on that property. I think that's going to be a really useful tool for neighborhoods, especially those that haven't had access to professional resources to do planning and design work, to understand really how this zoning code will affect them. And so I would encourage all the council to, uh, to let their neighborhood leaders know that that is going to be another part of it. We're looking for test sites that um, vary all across the city. We want, we want everything from, you know, maybe, maybe the large lot property that, that might have one set of issues to the very urban core that may have a different set of issues. But diversity across the city, diversity across current zoning, and diversity across income spectrums is really important to us because we're designing for an incredibly diverse Atlanta. And then, of course, the final part of the diagnostic is our esteemed legal team's research into various uh, legal considerations as we move forward. And so. There's a, there's a series that talks about conditional rezonings. There's a series that talks about vested rights. And then there's a very important series that talks about nonconformities. So that's sort of all the background. But the really important part of this updated memo and diagnostic is the recommended approach. This is, this is, the, this is where the rubber meets the road. So this recommended approach contains over 130 unique 
topics. And 130 is a lot, but our current zoning ordinance is almost 800 pages, so, <laughs> so you know the world we're dealing with. And they're grouped by themes. So there are topics that relate to preserving neighborhood character. There are topics that relate to ensuring housing diversity. And there are topics that relate to transportation. And sometimes, you know, they don't always align today. And we're very aware that they may not always align today. But, but we need to set the ground for what we're going to be talking about and, and, and so this is, this is a tool that does it. And so within that framework, there are updated recommendations. And I'll be quite honest, some of these are really specific. You know, the diagnostic knows, the, the diagnostic stated some things that I'm very confident will, will be very easily doable. So for example, total open space requirement. That's, uh, that's one of those things that is in the zoning code today that basically requires you to build parking lots. If, even if you're built, because it requires uncovered land, but it doesn't actually have to be green space. We've known for years that that doesn't make any sense, that people really care about green space. So what we're recommending is just to get rid of that. And that was actually in the 2017 diagnostic. But there's a lot of other areas where we need to hear from the community, we need to hear from, from all of the stakeholders before we can know how to codify. So issues of, of housing are going to be really, really critical to the process. Issues of transportation are going to be really critical. So as you, if you do have an opportunity to read through the diagnostic, there's a reason some of the recommendations are really definitive. Those are the ones that myself and our team, and I would say probably even OZD, recognizes are not going to be hot topics. There are things that, that are that are relatively easy to do. But there are other ones where we've prefaced it with have a conversation about or determine direction or confirm. Those are all the ones that are really critical for the conversation. And so we've broken those into technical updates, which are oftentimes the easier ones. These are just about clarifying language, format clarity, making the document more user friendly. But those policy changes those one, of those 130, there's probably 50 or so that are heavy policy changes are really the focus of the engagement process. And again, we're going to be taking baby steps, we're going to be starting with general and working towards specific, and we're going to be crafting a code that can apply both today and can apply in various parts of the city in the future as, as the city's need changes. So. With that said, the exercises are also going to incorporate discussion where we encourage folks to think about both current Atlanta needs and future needs, to respect the importance of the CDP, especially with regard to map changes. I can't emphasize this enough. The CDP is the basis for map changes in the city of Atlanta. And then incorporate conversations about trade-offs. Because again, some of the policies today, some of the, the aspirations today are in fact contradictory. And so we need to use this process to have a conversation that's, that's not legislation before your body, your city council, early in the process to build a foundation for going forward. So with that said, I would um, thank you very much for the opportunity and love to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for that um, presentation and just bringing us up to date on where we are with our zoning rewrite. Um, as you know, uh, yeah, there's a silver lining about what we all went through with um, our zoning rewrite um, stab at it last year um, it is that now we have a heightened awareness so people are engaged and really paying attention which we all need so I'm glad that we are here today getting this process started um, in a different way that is actually going to take care of of what the city needs I agree with you that is needed um, it's not easy, um, kind of like our tree ordinance. It's just something that we have to do. Um, and it'll be good for us because we do need to grow in a, a very special way here in Atlanta. Um, I do appreciate, and what, what, what I got from the presentation, is that we really are looking at Atlanta for what it's known for, and that is all of our different types of neighborhoods. 
Um, and I advocate for that because I think that um, it's important to preserve the different personalities in all of our neighborhoods. I love that we have such a diverse option of, of types of lifestyles and living right here in this one city. Um, and it really does, um, when I have friends and family to travel into the city, they're amazed. They're like, is, still, is this still Atlanta? Is this Atlanta too? Is this Atlanta? And I'm always like, yes, 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 yes. Atlanta proper. And um, just making that better, to me, is, is us winning all in all neighborhoods. Preserving where we need to, growing where we need to, and realizing that we have the opportunity to do that. So thank you for the presentation. I will say that I looked at the card here that talked about the let's go to work where we're engaging um, in these workshops and I would like to add one more in February if I can yes yes and it's because Atlanta goes all the way up to Camp Creek Marketplace we don't stop at 20 um, and I would like to either go to Camp Creek Marketplace or Campbellton Road I think we need an engagement up in the far west south 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 of Atlanta it's Pittsburgh Yards isn't close enough. Um, Habitat for Humanity isn't close enough. Trees Atlanta isn't close enough. And Buckhead Library isn't close enough. So I'd like to add a February. Thank you. Okay. And with that, let's get some questions from our council members, uh, Howard Shook. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's, it's great to see you guys. Caleb, you haven't changed a bit. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, my, I know I have. So a couple uh, questions. First of all, have you sent us this electronically? Because some of your maps look really cool, but did, in here it's too small for me to... Uh, yes, sir, you've received that electronically. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so the CDP gentleman had... What do you think about the reality that you're shackled to a CDP that was the vision for how Atlanta should build that's now 40 years old? In a lot of cases, it's just ridiculous. We're, we're very aware of that. Um, I, that said, I'm also very aware of the needs of various communities today. So, Councilman Shook, I, I believe what we're going to do, I know what we're going to do, is we're going to write a code that will have options in it for various communities that may choose to apply them in the future as the CDP is updated and neighborhood plans occur and, and things change. Um, that's what makes this zone string option so useful is that, as I said before, if you have a neighborhood that wanted to do something similar to the city design housing legislation last year. They could petition the, the council or, or for an amendment to CDP, but it's just changing one, one metric. It's just changing permitted uses. If they wanted to keep the form the same, if they wanted to keep the lot coverage the same. So that's very different from today, where they have to do an SPI or they have to do a historic district or they have to do a very long convoluted conditional rezoning. So I think we can create the tools and mind you, we are in collaboration with the team that's going to be looking at the CDP and make sure that that we're, we're, we're sort of linked at the hip. As things emerge from that process going forward, that we might identify opportunities for the zoning to change. But, but I don't envision, because Atlanta is so diverse, I don't envision that we would need new types of zones because we already have so many different communities today. And I think if you reflect those patterns, there's an opportunity to learn from other neighborhoods, if you will. Okay. But the CDP has to change in order. Yes. So, yeah. so legal, legally, uh, the CDP is is the foundation for zoning changes, and so we cannot, you cannot adopt a new zoning map 
that is drastically different from the CDP. I mean, it, it's it's a whole other legal process that we have to think about. But that's why when I said we would adopt the map and it would be very similar to what we have today, part of it is because we are assuming that the, that, that CDP is going to remain substantially similar. And as I mentioned, because I don't ever recommend major zoning changes as part of adopting a new zoning ordinance and a new map at the same time. It, it is very likely to fail on a national perspective, and I, you know, I know Atlanta. I don't. I don't feel that that's the right approach for here. Okay. Well, so that'll be an interesting discussion and yeah. follow up. Um, how concerned is your team about the reality that you can propose a new code and we'll adopt something, but then? A lot of it is open to interpretation. So as I mentioned, we have the nation's best code writer on our team, two of them, uh, Lee Einsweiler and uh, Colin Scarf out of Austin, Texas. They are with a company called Code Studio. They have received dozens of national code writing awards. And part of the reason for that is they write zoning in what is called plain English. So they get rid of all the legalese. They write it in language that folks can understand. And Colin, who is actually their, um, their proofreader, is he's, he's, he's just brilliant in terms of the English language. Like He understands how to be clear. And so we are going to work very closely internally as a team to make sure that language is clear, but then we're going to work very closely with OZD and Department of City Planning to make sure that as the draft text is out there, that it's understandable. And I also want to, when we have a draft, we want to put that out for full public consideration and let folks tell us if the language is unclear. And obviously, Mr. Zeckler and Jeff Haymore, who are also on our, Jeff's also on our team, are going to be making sure that we avoid any nebulous language. That, that is something that we are committed to avoiding. Okay. So, I, I assume you, so, you know, whatever, if we have a zoning and land use lawyer who just stepped off the stage, they can pull the rug out from pretty much anything that you wrote and we adopted. Right, but um, all right. Well, I mean, we'll deal with that. Did you want to comment, uh, Council Member Shook? Can I comment on that? Hey, Bob, you look uh, you look good too. Thank you, sir. As do you, and all of you, um, Madam Chair, and members of the committee. Good recovery. Good recovery. <laughs> you know, with how you have to be careful. <laughs> um, your question started with how concerned are we about, you know, to interpretations and, the, and so forth. And I, I've got to say that from my perspective and from Jeff's perspective, it's, it's a primary concern. Um, it's one of the, you know, I, in terms of my role, I've done this a lot of times before, many times. And uh, I've worked with Code Studio on lots of different codes. And they are excellent. And what happens, though, as part of the process is we go through this they start crunching the code and doing drafts, and then the drafts start to come over to the team, and we're vetting this stuff. I mean, that's what, what, what I consider to be one of my primary responsibilities. The other thing about that is that the definitions become super important. One of the big problems with Atlanta's code is that definitions not only are hard to find, because so many of the definitional issues are embedded in the draft of the code. So it's not like you look at the definition section and you have everything you need. Sometimes you have to go to, you know, chapter 21 and find it. So all of those things are extremely important to us and the process will ensure that there's a vetting of the draft before, you know, anything gets over to city council for adoption. So I'll make one more point on that. I used to lecture over at a, a Georgia State and one of the things I used to tell my students was I consider this work, which has become zoning work, Laney's work, which has become extremely difficult and complex, um, that what you're striving for is some sort of better percentage of the product. You know, if you've got two eyes on it, maybe you go from a 60% good product to 65. And if you get really good people, maybe you're bumping that up. 
So nobody can ensure that this is going to be bulletproof. But what you can say is that the odds improve as we have good people looking at draft and prioritizing the issue that you identified. So uh, also in, in terms of interpretation, there's a kind of a sister concern, which is to what extent, you know, are you uh, talking to the Bureau of Buildings because they have to be able to correctly interpret what's in the zoning code? Absolutely. I mean, you know, Director Pace's team is just extremely important. Okay. And um, they're, they're, they're a part of this process with, with um, Director Creek, uh, Holmes. So, um, yeah, I understand that. And I think we're probably going to get also some comments from, you know, various stakeholders as this, this process goes through, which I think so is you shall. appropriate. Um, when you're done, is this code going to be longer or shorter? Shorter. Shorter. Oh. Much shorter and much easier to see. Much easier to read. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Norwood. Um, guys, thank you very much. Thank you for your hard you. work. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, participate in the last idea lab where the, the strings were, were presented and I um, would love for all my colleagues to have that opportunity as well. I don't know if we might want to schedule just that one section for one of our meetings, um, not going through the whole thing. And, and the reason I say that is August 30th, 6.30 p.m., update Northwest Atlanta, Beltline. So I've got to be on the Beltline call. I cannot be at Buckhead Library. And there are going to be other people that are going to want to be on that call as they're finalizing and presenting where they're coming through. So it's just... Uh, the way it goes. And can you um, give us, as council people, a flyer that we can send out email uh, with these four dates, um, just in electronic form, and I will certainly send it out to my database, and I'm sure five, the five, five meetings, dates. five dates, Amen, uh, amended to be five. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, but that would be great if we could have something that we can send out now, people can get it on the calendar and they can understand. So one short paragraph, come and participate. It would be great. great. Uh, the uh, last thing I want to mention is you, uh, you talked about the 2017 diagnostics and that there were 50 that you considered heavy policy changes. Um, can you, can you uh, show us how to get to those? Um, yes, um, I, I'm doing this from memory, but if you go to atlzoning.com, there is a there are three buttons at the top. It's the it's which I don't remember the website. I think it's called Learn Learn and Contribute, and the diagnostic is right under there. Now, uh, Councilwoman Norwood, we do have the updated one. I I may recommend that you wait until. The, the updated text, because you, you would be looking at the 2017, I would wait until the updated one is uploaded, so we need to coordinate and just make sure that Office of Zoning and Development is prepared to release that. But um, I, will, I will certainly wait, because okay. your good work between 17 and now, yes. uh, we, we certainly want to be looking at something that's representative. And, and when you get the new one, I, I went ahead, because I, I sort of try to organize stuff in this way, and at, in the last couple of pages of the document, there's a summary table that talks about all of the changes. And I've classified them, are they technical, meaning they're just updating the words or making it clearer, or are they a policy change? And then if they're a policy change, I've sort of categorized them as high priority for outreach, medium, or low priority. We all know that what the hot, topic, hot topics are, and so that is really useful. I would go right towards the end and look at the summary of the recommendations when you get it, because that's going to tell you what you need. And I, I did also want to mention, and if I failed to mention this at the presentation, I'm sorry, the workshops are going to be recorded, they're going to be hybrid, and very importantly, we're going to have them available online for at least two weeks following each workshop. And we've done that because the idea labs were great, but if you weren't able to commit to those two hours, you weren't able to participate in the same way as someone who was. And so we've set them all up such that the, the video of the presentation will be there, the boards will be reviewable, and then everyone 
is going to have the same series of exercises. If you're there in person, you'll have worksheets so you can use your phone to take them. Or if you're taking it online, you go to a, a, the same website and you fill it out, you participate there. So we've done it such that there is no, absolutely no disadvantage of joining us in person or joining us online. And joining online later. Online later for at least two weeks. We you might be able Perfect. to extend that a little bit. That's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember Ferrocchi. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Overstreet. And Caleb, good to see you. Likewise. I'm excited you and your firm and, and Bob are part of this process. It's uh, no small task, as you're well aware. And um, we'll probably leave you with more gray hairs than you have today by the time we get to 2024. Uh, but to your last point on um, the workshops and availability, one of the challenges of uh, public policy making really at any level of government is um, uh, how we value and approach public input. Uh, I represent almost 56,000 residents. I probably hear from the same 250 residents over and over again. Almost all those residents, if not every one of those residents, is a homeowner or property owner. Fine, valid, you know, wonderful people, with valid opinions. Um, and one of the tricky things about zoning changes, whether it's housing decisions, industrial decisions, you know, however we think about zoning, right, uh, is that essentially we are making existing residents are making decisions about residents that don't yet exist in a city, right? It's one of the few areas where that kind of weird tension exists, right? I live here, I don't want you to live here because uh, I like it, you know. Um, and so I guess my question for you is, in the in these workshops and in all the public engagement what happened over the coming years, what steps, if any, will you all take to try and, uh, you know, entice as many people as possible to participate? And, and granted, most, the average citizen couldn't care less about zoning policy, right? Your eyes glaze over, you just want to go out your day and go to work, get your kid to school, I get it. Um, most people don't realize how zoning shapes our life and how we interact. But, and so you're gonna have a smaller population of people that are interested in participating in this. But uh, I think we would be richer in this process if there's a, a wide array of folks who attend the workshops, uh, offer opinions. I'm curious if y'all have thought about how to get more people involved in this process. Yeah, so the workshops are not the only engagement exercise. Our team actually was out at the Freedom Farmers Market this weekend. They were out at West End Mall canvassing this weekend, and there were one more place, but my, my brain doesn't remember it right now. So the outreach team, Content Consulting, is assisting with the workshop, but they're also doing a series of just intercept surveys where they'll be walking around with the property owner's permission, of course, and saying, hey, we're working on zoning. What is zoning? Give us your, you know, what, what, does this thing have any impact on you? And, and trying to make it more approachable. So, so they're doing that, and we are continuing to refine what that means. We're also working with some potential um, influencers, if you will, in Atlanta, about how do we reach the folks who are not normally engaged. So that could be things like going to you know, events that are not not typical zoning events and setting up booths. That could be things like um, putting QR codes at bus stations so people can, you know, they're waiting for the bus and they see something on the sidewalk and they click it and it has a few couple really general questions about, about things that relate to zoning. But we're still working on defining that, but we're very sensitive to the fact that we need to engage as many people as possible. Thank you. That's all I got. Is that it for the questions, colleagues? Uh, just one more thing. Um, I'm the one who asked for the flyer, and I would love to get a rough draft of the flyer, just so that if we have some language that we think would be more enticing, um, that we could that we could just see a rough draft and. and we, before mm -hmm. it's final. Yep. We, we will absolutely share the source language. I do have to. Rem remind you that we're required to get approval from Marcom on everything that we send out. So I'll let uh, Department, of, Department of City Planning determine what the appropriate procedures are, but we'll share whatever we need to. Thank you.
Okay, with that, thank you for the presentation, the update. Looking forward to the next one and the meetings in between. Um, and now we are moving on to legislative items. Um, read ordinances for, for first read. And there are two ordinances for, for first read that will be sounded and referred back to zoning committee and at our next full council, which is Tuesday, September 6th, after Labor Day holiday. So no action is needed right now. And we will move on then to our ordinances for second read. So Director of Zoning and Development, Kieta Holmes, will read the captions for our second read ordinances. Item number 3, 220-1425, Z2259, an ordinance by Council Member Alex Warren to zone property located at 1195 University Drive, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia, to the R4 Single Family Residential Zoning District. Staff, NPU, and ZRB recommendation and approval, and the request is to hold this item for the next quarterly CDHS meeting. Okay, the motion is to hold. Second by Shook. Please prepare the votes. The vote is open. Would all members please vote? And the vote is closed. Six A's, zero nays. Item number 4220-1580-Z2241, an ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from single family residential belt line overlay to mixed residential commercial belt line overlay for property located at 1070 Dill Avenue Southwest. Staff recommendation denial, MP recommendation approval, ZRB recommendation approval. I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please prepare the vote. Oh. The vote is open. Second by Faroke. Is that what you got? Thanks. And the vote is closed. Six shares, zero nays. Item number five, 220 U2213, an amended ordinance by zoning committee for a special use permit for a data center pursuant to 1618A006 for property located at 10 Forsyth Street Northwest. Staff recommendation approval, MPU and ZRB recommendation approval conditional. So I move approval as amended. Second by Westmoreland. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed. Six yeas, zero nays. And item number six, 220-1232-Z2209, a substitute ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from single family residential to plan development housing for property located at 889 McWilliams Road, Southeast. Staff and ZRB recommendation approval conditional, MP recommendation denial. I will move to approve as substituted. Is there a second? Second Boone. Second Boone. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open. And the vote is closed. It's five yeas, zero nays, one abstention. Item number 7, 220-1579, ordinance by zoning committee correcting ordinance 220-1234, Z2211, which was adopted by the city council on June 6, 2022, and approved as per the, the city charter 2403 on June 15th without signature by operation of law to rezone the property located at 1355 Funstream Street Southwest for, for the purpose of attaching the conditional site plan. Approval moved by Council Member Norwood, second by Overstreet. The vote is open. Would all members please vote? And the vote is closed to six yeas and zero nays.
And that completes our legislative items because we are not bringing any held items forward, um, which will bring us to the end of our legislative agenda. And with that, does anyone have any um, remarks, any general remarks, colleagues? I do, but I'll, I'd like for you to go first. <laughs> okay, in that case, I do just have one. Um, because of Labor Day um, on September 5th, our next uh, full council where these legislative items will be taken up is on September the 6th. And until then, we will see you all. This meeting is adjourned.